fit heads today we discovered the fountain of youth <laughs> <laughs> that's true i mean you've heard of anti- antioxidants before we specifically talk about glutathione which supposedly kickstarts your immune system boosts your energy overall good health food for I... the immune system what's that food for the immune system right and it was cool to hear just how interesting this is from someone who's super passionate about it. Yeah. And I mean, let's be honest. He mentioned liver antioxidants and both of our eyes perked up and we were like, I ooh, know ooh, 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 hangovers. And he was like, well, I mean, yeah, I guess, but that's like, it's, it also makes you live longer and it helps your every day. And we're like, right, 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 right. <laughs> but hangovers and he was like what yeah i mean what <laughs> welcome to total fitness serious fitness for not so serious people hi welcome giancarlo or should i say gianco is that how you go that's correct it's like i always say my my full name is giancarlo but since you guys are my friends in the audience then you guys can call me Gianco. love it so glad to have you and um, so you're all about the immune system, right? We would love to get just a background on you, how you got into this, what's your origin story? Yeah. And once again, thank you so much for the invite. You know, I've, I've learned so much with podcasting, you know, because it's free value for the world. And I think that's, that's amazing where we start these podcasts. So thank you, first of all. And uh, it's interesting to see because you know, like, I've always, I've always been interested in the topic of antioxidants in general. Um, because every time I consume antioxidants, either through supplements or either through good diet, I felt better, obviously, like, like everybody. So I just kind of got passionate about it at a young age. And I think also I, I was passionate about the topic and I got passionate because, um, my mom is a breast cancer survivor and she, she has an amazing story. You know, when she was diagnosed with cancer, uh, she was also pregnant, my little brother. So, you know, when it comes to health and nutrition and all that, it's, it's, it, it became 10 times more important after that situation. Right. And, um, it's interesting because when I really got into it, like when it became a career for me was in 2016, when my mom gets sick again, actually, but not cancer, something else. And she was basically in bed for a whole year. And we did many, you know, like we did many things, right. You know, we went to conventional doctors, we went to natural doctors, we tried all the supplements that you can imagine and all the diets and, in this case, for some reason, nothing seemed to be working. And I think some people in the audience can relate. Sometimes this happens until one day someone told us, actually, we were at someone's house and they said, um, have you ever heard about glutathione therapy? And we said, uh, no, never heard about it. Uh, tell us more about it. So this person kind of talks a little bit about glutathione therapy. Um, we liked what we heard. Uh, we got uh, a product from Canada that that is a glutathione precursor and we again were somewhat kind of clueless on what glutathione did but what we read was good enough and what i remember is that um a week later uh, after she started on it i wake up a sunday morning and i see her cleaning the whole house and i said ma what happened she says well it looks like it's this i have energy and that was my aha moment that was with the whole thing you know my dad my I know my, my dad, my brother, <laughs> me, my whole circle, we were just in shock with what happened. Now, again, I still don't know much about glutathione. I'm still kind of clueless about this topic. And I just kind of, you know, I bought all the books. I spoke to a lot of uh, doctors and scientists about this topic. And after like six months, I decided to basically make this almost as a mission and just, you know, tell lots of people about glutathione therapy. And um, it's been almost six years and I've been able to help over 5,000 people. So that's my story. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. Great way to start this. That's cool. So it's been your mission since then. Yep. That's right. That's been my so, story. Wait, you mentioned precursor. Can you Definitely. explain that? Sure. Yeah. So, you know, there, you know, first of all, we, we first have to talk about, about glutathione per se, right? So mm-hmm. before the pandemic, um, every time I asked a question to anybody, a stranger, like, Hey, have you ever heard about glutathione? Uh, lots of people would say, no, I've never heard about it. After the pandemic, I realized lots of people know about it now. Now, you know, because like everybody went to Google and like researched like how to have a strong immune system and then glutathione popped up. 
Um, and you know, and not only did glutathione pop up, now they started buying stuff that would either, you know, like they would either eat glutathione or raise glutathione. So that's where this whole precursor things come about. So um, precursors is, is that, you know, it's, it's basically the building blocks for your own cells to make it. That's precursor. So we found a way, my, my favorite way personally, um, through a product from Canada that has glutathione precursors in a way that I believe in. And it's, and, and that's pretty effective and that I've seen some results in it. So, you know, there's, you know, this um, glutathione topic is really complex. It really extends, you know, because doctors have ways of injecting glutathione, right? Um, there are some glutathione pills, even though that's not my fair way at all, personally, because there hasn't been many studies, but, you know, we'll talk about uh, more about that later. But I've seen that with glutathione precursors, I've seen better results for me and for many people. Now, is this for, is this just like general health is this for a specific ailment is this for i mean am i gonna get taller am i gonna live 10 years longer am i gonna get a third fourth arm you know like what do we <laughs> what do we I, you know I'm, I'm happy that your mom got out of bed after you that sounds spectacular but like what sort of stuff like what are the what are the sort of benefits you know i get that question a lot you know because every time i start with this story a, a lots of people come to the conclusion that, oh, it's for sick people then, right? It's for people that are in bed and now got out of bed. And the reality is, no, that's that, that's my story, right? You know, like that's how I got introduced. But um, I when I started reading about the prevention benefits, then that's when I started consuming it myself. So to answer your question, Max, um, no, it's for everybody. And I'll talk more why it's for everybody. And it's because... Um, We've technically known about glutathione since more than 100 years ago. It was actually discovered in 1888. Uh, that's when doctors figured out glutathione. But it took 100 years to them to figure out how to raise it. Uh, that's, the, that's the most interesting part. So it, it's something that we all have in our body. We're all born with glutathione. And um, it basically has four functions in the body. So it's, it's uh, food for the immune system. It's um, after water, it's known as the best detoxifier because 70% of it is in our liver. Um, it's key for energy because it works closely with the mitochondria, mm -hmm. which is our energy plan, as you guys know. And it's, um, a, it, it's, it's considered as the body's master antioxidant. And the reason why is because it's one of the few antioxidants that your own body makes. And so it recharges all of the other antioxidants. And how they discovered how to, how to raise it, the first doctors that are, are at least confirmed. And I, I think you have a question, Ally, before I keep going. No, no, I oh, okay. See, you're talking your mouth. I was like, you want to ask something? <laughs> no. So <laughs> the doctors that, that actually figure it out, or at least, you know, like the first ones that are recorded that, that actually kind of figured this out a little bit was in the eighties when uh, Dr. Bunos, uh, one of the Canada's top scientists and Dr. Kongshan, and she was actually the first woman immunologist in Canada. And uh, they were just in search of proteins. They were in search of good proteins for the body. And a company from Switzerland sends them a protein. Says, look, we have no idea um, what value this protein has. Uh, try it in mice. And, you know, that's what they do in, you know, a laboratory. So they started trying it in mice. And what they saw was that the mice were living 30 to 50% longer. That was their <laughs> like, whoa, like this is incredible. What does this have? And that's when everything led to glutathione. That's when they found out that the pre that this protein had the precursors to make glutathione. So to go deeper into your, you know, um, your question, Max, is it for everybody? It, it is for everybody, you know, because let's just talk about the first thing it does, which is feed the immune system. I mean, if, if you have a strong immune system and you're taking care of it every single day, you know, through nutrition and, you know, and, um, and exercise and low stress. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you can probably add something like this, then you will, probably live a better life. You know, you know, like I know people and I have friends that are in their seventies and are more fit than me and they work out and they swim and they're traveling. And I'm like, how? And, you know, like whenever I ask them the question, they've been taking care of their immune system for a long time. Hmm. And I know people that are under forties that look like they're 60. And then you ask them what they've done and they've barely ever done exercise. They never really cared about nutrition. They didn't really care about the immune system. 
you know, you know, because everything affects the immune system. Okay. So, um, you know, it is for everybody, you know, if you're a fitness guru, if you just want to prevent colds as much as possible, if you just want to keep your antioxidant level at its peak, Mm -hmm. Uh, that this is for you. And of course, if you have an illness and you're already on medication and you would like to add something that um, can even help your antioxidant system. Absolutely. I mean, we're a little early for the, our normal question, but I mean, you already touched on it. How is this for hangovers? Well, uh, good question. We, we go with the liver, right? So of course, after water, it is the best detoxifier. So glutathione will detoxify, um, many toxins. And so of course, if you went through hangover, I think that answers the question. <laughs> <laughs> you got to test it. It's true. Getting so yeah, I mean, science. you know, like I know people, I mean, you guys are in California, of course, you guys know about a bulletproof, the company. And I once read an article in their blog, and um, uh, Dave Asprey, the, the owner, who's a big glutathione fan, um, he, he actually spoke about it on, on an article that uh, before he goes to drink, um, he has his ways of uh, increasing glutathione and he increases glutathione. I, th I think he puts an injection right before he drinks, actually. Um, don't, don't particularly quote me. I'm pretty sure that's what <laughs> I read like two, three months ago. And I was like, whoa, he does that. But some people do that before they, go, they drink because of the benefits they have for uh, for the liver. Interesting. Is there a way to overdose other side effects? If you either have too much or perhaps some people are sensitive or allergic to it. Yeah. So, you know, this is where I spoke in the beginning about precursors. This is why I prefer precursors because, um, if you go to pdr.net, that's the pharmaceutical book for you, for, for the U S and if you, if you type this, um, and you type my product in which I'll, I'll say your name in a second. Um, and you go to the end of, of the information and it talks about overdose. It says that there's never been a case of overdose. The reason why with precursors generally, it's very hard to overdose is because whenever your bodies make glutathione, if you consume too much of it, in a sense, um, your body would just throw it away. Like it won't even bother. So like your cells won't make more glutathione when you give the precursors. Now, when you feed your body with glutathione, let's say either through injections or other forms of glutathione that your body can somewhat get directly, that's that, that could be dangerous because there, there, there are studies proving that too much of it can be very dangerous. And the reason why it's dangerous is because our bodies are not meant to consume glutathione itself. Our bodies are meant to consume the precursors to make glutathione. Some people can argue against this and, you know, I can, you know, I can talk to them, of course, you know, because like everybody has their own opinion, but I think it's all about the studies, right. And seeing, you know, what the studies approve. And I've seen time and time again, that studies keep proving that precursors is a lot. It's uh, it's just more safe in general. And so when you go with the precursors, it's very hard to overdose again. I've in my six years, I've never seen that happen. Mm. You mentioned, are there, um, I mean, obviously we're talking about supplements and there's a word that what would be some sort of a, like natural ways to boost your, to boost your body's production. Well, yeah, you know, cause you're talking about precursor, isn't there like uh, a precursor, the precursor that's like broccoli or something, a pre precursor. <laughs> actually, I, actually, it's funny that they mentioned broccoli at, I was actually going to talk about that right now. You guys asked that question. Yeah. It's um, like a superfood or whatever. It also cures hangovers probably. <laughs> well, well, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting because, um, broccoli seeds. Okay. Uh, especially the broccoli seed extract, right. It's, uh, it's, it's what we call sulforaphane. And, uh, there's also many, and not only broccoli seeds, but, um, just like Brussels sprouts in general, they have sulforaphane and uh, sulforaphane is really powerful. There's so many studies on it. And sulforaphane activates a gene in our body called NRF2. And this gene will actually make a better glutathione uh, when you combine it with these precursors. Um, so the main precursor for glutathione is actually bonded cysteine or cysteine. Um, a cysteine is the, 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 the way to make glutathione inside the cells. So if you combine this with, let's say, sulforaphane, or sulforaphane supplement or just broccoli in your diet or Brussels sprouts, whatever, this will make a better glutathione. Um, 
when it comes to just raising glutathione in other ways, look, generally good habits like good nutrition and good sleep will help you maintain glutathione. And, and that's so basic, right? You know, um, you yeah. guys, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's so Give basic. It's the secret hack. Yeah, sleep right. upside down. <laughs> right. And reality is, you know, like if, you know, like you have to know your body, and that's why it's so important to, you know, like test your body, you know, in safe ways and all that. But good sleep and good nutrition will absolutely maintain glutathione. But, you know, of course, this this nutrient of cysteine, it's hard to find in diets um, in high levels. So which is why I suggest it so much. And I'm so strongly passionate about this. But, yeah, you know, again, just good, good habits will maintain glutathione levels as much as it can. What about like when I'm recovering from a workout? Cause is this also related? Like I know I beat myself in the gym. So is it, yeah. I need glutathione little sat- thigh on to get back from that. For sure. And, uh, we actually did a study I think 10 years ago and it was um, on this topic on workouts and, um, they wanted to see, you know, if, if it was good for, you know, for athletes. And it was interesting because we did a study we, we gave a placebo to a group of like 10 guys. And then uh, we gave them this product to them and, you know, same workout regimen. We just want to see after three months if there were, you know, like there was any real results with it. And after three months, they saw that uh, the people that were on this actually had an increase of 15% muscle mass. Um, and in the beginning, if we're honest, we weren't too excited about it. We didn't think that was a big number, but then we realized that, <laughs> right, right. So, so, so then we realized talking to the, you know, to athletes and all that, that they said, no, 15% is amazing. They said, this is like incredible. So, so then we said, okay, let's publish it. <laughs> right. You know, because like, <laughs> you know, like we weren't really excited, you know, you know, like we weren't really sure about it, but, um, you know, that's just studies, right. Um, you know, like on a personal level, you know, like I wasn't, you know, I'm not an athlete like you guys, you know, like I don't work out as much as you guys, <laughs> but, um, I've seen no that one does, <laughs> no one does <laughs> That's another podcast, <laughs> but you know, like just recently I was with a friend and uh, we just went to work out and, um, he said, you know what? He said, I'll be your personal trainer for like a week. I said, okay, cool. So he put me, you know, like on intense workouts and all that. And he, he calls me the next morning. He says, okay, how do you feel? And I said, well, you know, I have, you know, just, you know, I'm a little sore, but not much. So he's like, that's, he's all expecting you to be really sore. And this happened after a week. And he says, he says, I've noticed that you're not, you're not really too sore. And I said, well, you know, I explained about, about glutathione and he had no idea. So with that in mind, um, as you guys know, uh, there is an over workout syndrome, right? people that actually work out too much and that can actually deplete the immune system. And when that happens, and of course the recovery is slower. So of course this is literally food for the immune system. So I've seen amazing things, you know, um, I was just talking to an athlete, uh, an Olympic uh, medal, actually, her name is Joanna. And I saw her in March in Texas and uh, she's on it. And um, I asked her about her recovery and she says that her recovery is amazing. That uh, once she found out about it, she told her coach about it to investigate about it and see, you know, if it had any value and uh, had incredible value. So she got on it and uh, she's forced by it. And she's, she's an Olympic uh, champion. So yes, Ali, it is um, for me, it, it is incredible for working out. And I could talk about this on a personal level. You should, um, sounded like your mom was up and at him like the next day how long does it take to build up in your system? How long would you start to feel the effects just like the the average person? Well, you know, yeah, my mom was out of bed like after a week and her case was, was special. But, but, you know, it depends. And when I say it depends, it's because, you know, for example, like you get someone that's pretty healthy. Okay. uh, Who has a good diet, who works out, who gets generally good sleep they're pretty healthy by itself and they have lots of energy by itself. So of course, so if they start consuming, it's not like they'll feel miraculously better the next day because they're actually pretty healthy. They will see added benefits, for example, like recovery, uh, recovery will be just incredible. Um, and you know, just, 
you know, like more muscle math, you know, like more, more, more muscle strength and all that, but just feeling generally better immediately, not necessarily because you guys are pretty healthy. Right. So that's for the healthy person, um, for the person that doesn't have good habits or isn't too healthy, then they will probably see better results quicker. Um, so it all depends. I can't really give you, you know, like an exact, you know what I mean? Like, Oh, you know, cause as soon as the next day you're good, like caffeine, right? Like coffee, you know, because it's not the case, but you know, I have spoken to people that like that has happened. You know, like it's like, I tell everybody who is interested in raising glutathione. I said, look, I said, you know, like just try at the beginning, see what happens. And then you will, you know, your body will decide. Don't bring up coffee. I'm on day two of a caffeine detox. <laughs> How horrible. <laughs> yeah, it sucks. <laughs> Who does these things, man? Who does these things? Let's stop coffee for two days. <laughs> two? I'm, tr- I'm aiming for a, mo- a week, maybe longer. We'll see. Uh, hey, well, I'll pray for you. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> uh, so if this is so miraculous, I mean, it seems like found of youth, <laughs> then... That's Why is it not more about. popular? Why is this the first time we've heard about it? What the heck? Well, you know, that's what I told myself the first time I heard about it. <laughs> well, you know, well, you know, look, it's let's just be honest. It's because we're not we're not a pharmaceutical company. You know, like, you know, like we don't have 50 billion in cash, you know, you know, we're not these big, big pharmaceutical companies that, you know, can just dominate the world. I'm not criticizing them, by the way. Um, but it's just a reality, you know, we were, you know, like we just started as a small co- company in Canada, you know, and, uh, we, we had the option to make this as a pharmaceutical, but the markup was going to be so ridiculous that we decide, you know what, if, if we make it as a pharmaceutical, we can for money reasons, we can. Um, but are we really going to reach a lot of people? Maybe not, you know, just reminds me of there's a, there's a, a medicine for hearts for a heart uh, disease and uh, they sell it for some countries in Africa. And I think it costs them 60 cents to make and it's only for a hundred dollars in the pharmaceutical industry. And so that tells you about the mark in the, in the pharmaceutical industry. It could be crazy. So this was the case. If we were going to make it a pharmaceutical, would it have been more popular the pharmaceutical? I, I bet it would be being you know, like a lot more popular as pharmaceutical. What have people have more access to it? That's the other question. So I think, you know, to answer your question, I like, again, we don't have the cash that pharmaceutical companies have. So, you know, we're still somewhat of a small company. Um, and that's why it's one reason why we also do podcasts, right? Because we talk about uh, good value, good content and things that people can get. So um, we actually, uh, there's a, when I first heard about this, um, there's a saying in, in Canada, with this product, it's, it's called it's it's uh, called uh, Canada's best se- uh, best kept secret, and that's what I call it. It's Canada's uh, best kept secret. We're not keeping a secret anymore because it's uh, we will not do good to humans to my fellow humans if if we did. But uh, yeah, to answer your question, that's that's why Ali. Do you think that's the biggest <clears throat> obstacle your company's facing? What obstacle per se? Trying to get the word out and trying to fight these, <laughs> not fight or compete with gigantic. Well, you, you know, I would say maybe the biggest obstacle that we have as a company is being careful with claims, you know, because we're, we're it's not a pharmaceutical. So if it's not a pharmaceutical. We have to be very careful with claims, you know, mm-hmm. as you guys have seen, like I haven't spoke about any claim. I'm just speaking about some stories. I'm talking about glutathione per se. Not so much the product because, you know, we can get in trouble and that could be hard when you see so many results in people and especially in my case with my family, you know? Um, so I think it's claims is always a big issue, you know, because they're always trying to find that, that natural product, that nutraceutical that is claiming and then close them down. And if we're not careful, then we can be focusing on fear, right. And not actually helping people. So you know, like, I always tell my people like, look, like just focus on, you know, don't, don't overpromise, you know, because overpromising is bad. And just generally speaking, but um, not only is it bad for people to, you know, for, for customers to overpromise, um, but it's bad for our company and for our uh, reputation, you know, because they could, you know, they could close us if, if, if we just spoke about claims. Right. So, you know, it's, you know, it's just speak about more about glutathione, the science behind it. And, uh, you know, just talk about your stories without, 
going into detail about what you went through and the names. And uh, the more we do that, I think uh, the more we can spread the word with safety. Well, then you probably don't want to answer this, but I was curious. <laughs> there are <laughs> so many different products on your site. I just wanted to know like the ins and outs of, of how they differ. Uh, okay. Yeah. So um, on my side, yeah. So, I mean, look, so as you can see, for example, like we spoke about soul for Orphan, right? So if you guys saw my website, this is jungle.com. Uh, there's a product called the Immunocal Booster. So let me actually give, you know, like a kind of, uh, and I, you know, just the names of everything. Okay. So the main product I'm talking about is Immunocal. That's the name of my, the main product. So it's Immunocal. Then we have Immunocal Platinum and then the Sport that just came out. And I'll go into detail in a second. And then we have the Immunocal Booster. That product is the one that has sul uh, sulforaphane. I've seen great results with it. There are some other sulforaphane products out there. I honestly don't have much info about the other ones. If, you know, if whoever's listening to the audience, if they have, awesome. I personally don't know. I just know mine, obviously. And then we have, um, I, I also added a, as a plus the omegas is I know omegas are really just generally really good for, um, for working out for brain health. And I've seen that when people add all these together, they get really great results. Um, going back with immunocal, the main glutathione precursor. So the, the main, the main immunocal, which is a blue box that we have, um, that was the main protein they used to feed the mice. And they're like, what is this? So that's the classic one, right? That's the classic one. That's the one that anybody can consume. Even a baby can consume that product. It's so safe. Okay. And then we have the platinum. The platinum has some extra minerals and some creatine that makes it a better product for certain athletes and people that are over 35, because we realize that people, when they're over 35, they lose a lot of muscle mass in general. So, so adding creatine helps this. Okay. And then the sport is a product that, of course, it's, it's meant more for athletes, uh, people that are really active physically. And why? It's because it has not only the glutathione precursors, but it has nitric oxide precursors. And that's we're new to that space. We've always been glutathione people, never nitric oxide people, but we've seen amazing results with working out. So we decided to, to not only have a glutathione precursor supplement, but a nitric oxide. So it has um, cherry extract, it has a beta extract, it has l citrulline a new amino acid, and magnesium. So that makes it, for me, it's it's my it's my favorite one because of all of the um, athletic, you know, just like athletic benefits. Uh, but again, they all, you know, these three, they all raise glutathione. Uh, but it has, you know, just, um, it helps people in different ways. You brought up that people are more aware of this now since, <clears throat> excuse me, since COVID. Have there been any tests on, on the enhancing your immune system specifically for that? Have they done any studies or is it still a big question mark? There are many studies uh, proving that um, every COVID patient, every COVID patient has the lows of glutathione. Many studies. Um, I, I have a friend, his name is Dr. Jimmy Gutman. He's actually the one who knows more about glutathione in the world. If, you know, like for who, who, who's watching, listening, they can just literally uh, Google his name. He has many books on the topic. He talks in the whole world about it. And um, when COVID came about, I, I, after like six months, I asked him, I said, okay. I said, so, you know, I know you're researching about this. What about glutathione and COVID? And uh, he said, well, he said, again, for safety reasons, he said, I can't speak too much about it. He says, but if you go to PubMed and you just research glutathione and COVID, time and time again, shows that everybody with COVID has the levels of glutathione. And so that just tells you that COVID um, de depletes the immune system, obviously. So raising glutathione could be a very effective way. Is there like different dosing depending upon how compromised you are, how big of a max you are or small of an alley <laughs> you are? For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you're, if you're overweight, you probably need maybe like 20 grams of this uh, in the beginning. And then maybe you can eventually just go to 10 grams. Um, and, and, but, you know, again, it depends, right? So, you know, like if you're like under 10 years old, you know, like you probably only need like four or five grams a day. Or, you know, if you're, if you're literally, three, you know, like if, if you're literally a three year old baby, you can consume maybe one, one gram a day. But, you know, it just basically the older you get, the more grams you need, right? So, for example, like for athletes, I've seen that 20 to 40 grams a day. Um, works better for people that are really active physically, especially athletes and people that have, or that are battling certain, you know, like illnesses, um, together with their medication, they can, you know, they can consume 
a lot more. You know, you could go to 60, 80 grams of this with, uh, with complete safety. But, you know, it all depends. It all depends on the person and situation. And like you said, the weight also is huge. This, <laughs> this question is taken directly from the suggested ideas to uh, speak with you. So I just want to know, how can people distinguish credible advice from those just trying to make a buck? And that's not me throwing shade. That was suggested. <laughs> And, you know, the reason why I even put that there is because uh, a pet peeve of mine is um, people consuming stuff with no with, with no research. I think that's terrible. Um, you know, there's, you know, for example, let's talk about a giant, right? Let's talk about Amazon. I love Amazon. I buy stuff from Amazon every single week or day. Uh, I think we all do at this point. Um, but I, I would never suggest buying supplement from Amazon. And the reason why I would never suggest this is because most people selling from Amazon literally just only have a motive and that's to to make a buck and they, and they really don't care about the consumer. Um, I have a strong opinion on that. And um, a lot of supplements from Amazon are expired also. Um, for example, like, like, you know, like, like my product, you know, so some people try to sell it through Amazon and it turns out that there's actually lots of fakes of my product, you know, uh, people buy it through Amazon and when they open it, it's like corn powder inside. It's not even our product. And so this is so, you know, this is so dangerous and people trying stuff, and maybe the vitamin C, you know, just to give an example, has no research at all. And, and that's so dangerous. And, and like, that's why we have so many medical doctors, um, you know, they're fair or not fair. And like, that's another topic, but that really don't trust a lot of supplements because of that reason. And um, one of the reasons why I, I was confident about talking to, to, to people about my product was because, you know, it has over 80 patents. And it's in the doctor's book. It has, it's clinically studied in humans, not only mice. Most supplements are only tested on mice, not humans. Um, mine is tested on both. And so it has so much credibility that, um, you know, of course, if you talk to your doctor about it, you know, you know, like your doctor will see all of its info. So, you know, this doesn't apply only with my product, but, I, you know, it applies, you know, like with everything. You know, if you if you want to consume a supplement or 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 just a treatment, ask yourself what kind of research does it have. And um, I would always suggest doing that first before consuming something. Yeah. But it's hard though, right? Like I feel like, especially this day and age, there's you can always sort of find. And again, I, I hate to do this, but I'm doing air quotes. <laughs> Credible. Uh, research to back up your claims i mean there's credible research of aliens and time travel you know all this all this crazy stuff so how do how do you how do you point people to the right you know yeah research right stuff? well you know look most drugs are they go through what they call a uh, double blind clinical study mm -hmm. and so that's a good way to see if your supplement is credible or you know the treatment has it gone through a double-blind clinical study? And if so, what were the results? I know mine has. So I think that's a that's a great base to, to, to see what kind of credible research. Because, hey, you know, you're, you're right, Max. You know, like, uh, during these past six years, I've had people try to tell me, oh, you know, I, I found something better than your thing. And, you know, the doctor's just fantastic. And, you know, he has all the awards in the world and blah, blah, blah. But, and, you know, and it's true, you know, I, I go through their company, like through their supplement and all that. And, um, and then I go through that doctor and uh, I found out that the doctor that, let's say, made the supplements uh, really only had a business in mind. And then they made a supplement. So that's, and then what happens eventually? I've seen those, you know, I've seen those doctors eventually close that company, go to another one and go up another one. So what do you see? Well, they didn't have the right motives. So, you know, that's, that's something that I always try to do too. Um, and, and see, you know, okay, if, if they, if they made this, why did they make it? Um, was, was money the only factor behind this or was there some actual true research behind it? Um, so that would be another way that I would research a product. So you've been working closely with these doctors and scientists and you kind of already mentioned it with your sport formula. Like you came across something else that you're passionate about. Yep. Uh, what else have you come across? What's the, 
<clears throat> newest discovery is you have future products. Well, you know, we've, uh, we actually just released, an, uh, released a new patent on uh, autism and it took us 10 years to do that. Uh, and I think that's fascinating because in the beginning, when we knew about glutathione, uh, the focus was just really more antioxidant protection, immune system. We, we didn't realize how important the glutathione is for the brain. And uh, we're doing lots of research on glutathione in the brain. And um, that's really where we're focusing on right now. You know, the immune system and antioxidant, there's, there's more than research proving that's amazing for the immune system. Um, but for the brain, that's been, again, it took us 10 years to, to release this bad, uh, you know, to really see. And, uh, you know, many, many great, great cases proving this. But um, yeah, that's our new focus. Again, you know, we just, you know, like when I got here, our focus was just more glutathione, right? And then we started investigating about genes. That's when we came up with sulforaphane, you know, to, you know, because we saw that the, the importance of certain nutrients activating certain dead genes in our body. And then we now, and then now we're, now we're investigating about nitric oxide, this amazing molecule that was researched in the nineties. And now we're looking into stuff that activates nitric oxide. Uh, but apart from that, we're, we're really looking at glutathione in the brain. You mean How common is it that you could not supplement with something you could use a precursor? Is that like, what do you mean? I don't know. Does that happen across like, instead of taking vitamins, should we be taking precursors? That is it a common thing or is it really specific to glutathione and nitric oxide? Well, well, you know, that's, that's a good question. Um, I mean, for example, there are certain uh, antioxidants like vitamin C that your body doesn't make. So you have to consume it directly either through foods or either through supplements. So there's no really, there's not really a way to activate vitamin C. You, you have to consume it directly. And that's the case. Actually, I would say for 80% of antioxidants, you have to consume it to get it. Um, but certain molecules like glutathione and nitric oxide, um, it's, we, we've seen more effective studies proving that it's a lot better to, 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 to give your body the precursors. Um, but that doesn't apply to every antioxidant. Um, again, vitamin C and vitamin E, just to mention too, you have to eat it to get it. For glutathione, you have to eat the precursors of the building blocks. And with nitrate oxide, um, we've also seen it's a little bit more effective to feed your body with the precursors like uh, like L-citrulline or like uh, beet extract. And so you built this company from nothing. You were just like, all right, I'm going to start at zero and really get this all out there. I'd love to hear that story. I know it's not necessarily a fitness thing, but it's fascinating. Well, you know, I've, I've always been interested in entrepreneurship and I've always been interested in starting businesses. Uh, I've always, you know, like I've been doing volunteer work since I'm extremely young, since I'm 12. And so, you know, like uh, people and helping people and being, a, um, I've always liked it. So when I, when I, when I graduated from high school, I wanted to start a business um, but you know, what happens when you Google starting a business? Well, at least five, almost six years ago, it was scary. You know, 80% of people fail. Um, you need $10,000 to start a business and all these crazy big things. And that, that was scary for me. Um, but then I, you know, when, when this came in my life, you know, I, I never saw it as something to help a lot of people to start a business in my life. Um, but I was, you know, I was always a hustler, you know, if it was, you know, uh, lawn work, if it was construction, if it was waiting tables, you know, I, you know, I, I've always liked to work, but, um, I, it was hard for me to, 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 uh, find the resources. There you go. That's the word to find the resources to start a business and what are resources, right? It's money or people, uh, those important resources. And I, I didn't think I had any of those, um, until I found this product and then I found a way to expand it and help a lot of people with it. And, um, it's interesting because I talk a lot about like blessings in disguise, you know, and sometimes you find the thing in the weirdest way ever. You know, like I, I never thought I would find my career through a, a through a health challenge in, in my mom's case, you know, because that was a very dark time in our lives. Um, and I never I had no idea. And it, it makes me think that, or it, it reminds me 
that if you want to create a very successful business, I, I, I once heard something from, from a uh, Harv Ecker, very popular entrepreneur. He said, he said, if you want to help a lot of people, you have to look for problems and opportunities. And I thought that was fascinating to think about because he says behind the problem is the opportunity to solve it. And I think that's the main reason why I got into business. We had a problem. We found a way to fix it. And so I said, you know what? I think I can also help a lot of people fix their problem. And so, you know, I just started investing a lot of myself in my, in my business. And uh, here we are. I mean, you're, uh, you know, I'm in your guys' podcast, so I don't think it went. Too, I don't think it went too bad. <laughs> <laughs> You've arrived. I've arrived. I've arrived. If, if I'm in this podcast, I've arrived, people. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> how old are you going to live to? Well, my goal. That's is not forever. a weird question. He brought up Dave Asprey, and Dave <laughs> is always like, "I'm going to be 180 at least." Did you guys actually interview Dave Asprey? No. So, and I called him Dave. Yeah. My bud, Dave. No, we did not have him on. He's not arrived yet. So mm, <laughs> sucks for him. I arrived first before Dave Asprey. What? Yes. <laughs> Privilege. Yeah. Well, Hey, you know what? Look, like I always say, the goal, the goal is to live forever, but um, more than, more than the age per se, I, I want to live quality of life that I want to live, you know, like I, you know, I want to be 80 to 90 years old and, and hike and hike with my family and hike with my grandchildren. you know, that's what I want to do. And Hey, even a hundred, you, you know, just, just recently, you know, go, going back to this um, antioxidants topic, you know, uh, there's a place in Italy called Sardinia and, uh, and Sardinia, it's one of the places where people live over a hundred years old. And, um, I started investing a lot about Sardinia the blue and, zone or whatever they call it. I, I'm sorry. They call it the blue zones. Places that where people live really long. Yeah, that's right. That's right. The blue zones. And they have lots of people that live over hundred. And like I saw the documentaries and they're, they're hiking, they're walking, they're eating, they're drinking at hundred. It's amazing. And the main reason why, and again, you know, there's a lot of factors, right? You know, the pollution is low in that area. Their nutrition is amazing. They have low stress. Um, there's some particular wine grapes there that have like really high levels of antioxidants. I mean, there's so many factors, you know, they're very community. Like, you know, there's a lot of emotional factors too, uh, but they all contribute to one thing and it's high levels of antioxidants. That's just, you know, like that's the conclusion, you know, and, and you know, in this country, like we're always so fast paced and it's something so hard to keep up. Um, but in this place are, you know, they're kind of more slow paced community. Like, you know, it's not saying it's better or worse than here, but it does contribute to the high levels of antioxidants. So, you know, going to, you know, to, to that question, I like, you know, it's, it's that you like, I, I want to be 89 years old and have good, good quality of life. You know, I don't want to be 90, in bed in a wheelchair. That's, that's so sad. Yes. Longevity. What, what do they call it? Health span, not lifespan. Yeah. We all love we all love that topic, not longevity. It's such a yeah. such an passionate topic. <laughs> so we all <laughs> love life. <laughs> Grouping to it. Well, this has been fascinating. Thank you so much for joining us. No, thank you guys. And uh, whenever you guys um, have Dave Asprey, uh, let me know. <laughs> yeah, sure. I don't know. We'll see if he can, he can get on our <laughs> level. <laughs> no, thank you guys. Again, um, as I mentioned at the beginning, I, I love podcasting. I love talking to people like you both um, because uh, it really is, I think, the ultimate way of networking, right? Which is learning from each other and then giving it to the world. So thank you. It's been a good convo. Heck yeah, I love it. Oh yeah, you have your own podcast too, right? I do, but um, if I'm honest, I'm, I, um, I haven't been active in it for a year. Um, I started becoming more of a guest in podcasts and actually being a host. I'm planning to be a host again soon. Um, you know, because like when I started my podcast, I started very like home style, you know, like the Anchor app and things like that. And you know, you know, like just to kind of jump in the water and see how it was. And then I kind of got into the guest world and podcasting. So I, um, I really enjoyed this, but. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's called, you know, for the ones that do want to listen to the episodes that I have there, it's called the Jonko Podcast. It's on Spotify and, and Apple Podcasts and all that. And um, you find some nice episodes. And where can people find your products too? Yeah, so just go to this is Jonko. So this is and then G I A N C O dot com. Um, that's that website gives you an overview kind of of the products. But um, I, I, I personally like to stay in contact with people would do that website. So, you know, you can find my social media links in that website. 
you can find my email also. So if any of you guys had a question and you just want to send me an email or send me a social media DM, you guys can absolutely do that. I'm actually got to give this a shot at least after a night of drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Test it out. For All science. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you again. Thank you guys. And thank you to the fit heads. If you can rate and review on Apple podcasts, we appreciate that. We'll be reviewing your reviews soon. So get it in before we do that episode and we will see you next week.